Hello world, my name is Nick360 and welcome back to Prison Architect. We finally have a release date for version 1.0 of Prison Architect. So I'm so excited for the changes in 1.0 that will be coming up. Anyway, back with our tutorial series, we're going to talk about cloning and micromanagement. In bureaucracy, we have clone here, and we're going to start that. And we have micromanagement, which we're going to start that as well. Now, while those are researching, I'm going to explain some quick changes I made to the prison if you've been watching from the beginning. I've added these two buildings, and we're going to do some stuff with them very shortly. I also cleaned up the showers so they all have shower heads. I expanded and put some bins in the kitchen. Now, there was a fence here, and I dismantled it to make room for this building. And now there's this box here, which contains a staff door that used to be here. Now, I don't want this box here. I have a couple options. I can click on it, and I can dump it. But I don't want to dump it, I just want to store it for later. And so we can do that very easily by creating a storage room. So we go to room, and then we go look for storage. I'm really bad at looking for them. Storage, and then we just create a storage room. And I'm almost as soon as I create it, I imagine a worker is going to come and pick up this box. And eventually a worker will come around. Uh, that's well, not that kind of worker. This kind of worker, pick up the box and bring it in storage. So that way you don't have to sell any of your stuff, but you can keep it later because I'm going to use the staff door at one point or another. But now I can just keep the staff door here and other building materials that I dis dismantle, but I don't demolish. I, I break it apart into its pieces and so I can put it together for later. So it's kind of like the attic, but I just put it right in front of my morgue and right by my garbage. Another thing while we're waiting for them to research is I'm just going to add some walkways all around my prison. So now I have all these places. Oops, I didn't want to make it that wide. All right. So just add some walkways around my prison, just so people can get around much more efficiently. And there we go, we've unlocked clone and micromanagement. So let us cover clone first. Clone is very simple. It allows you to copy a section you've built before and paste it somewhere else. So there's two sections. One is what you're gonna copy, and the second is what you're gonna paste. So I use the right click and I highlight an area I've highlighted this cell, so I'm going to copy the cell and I'm going to place it. Now this is the cell with the door facing to the right, so I can only use this on this part here, which I want to make this another cell block. Also you note that I have this wall here on the bottom, so I want to place it here because I have the left wall on the left side and I have this bottom wall on the bottom side, and I place it, and now everything in it, so the wall, the door, the toilet, the, the, the window, the, the bed, all of that's going to copy over, and then I can place that again and I got that lower wall I got it and I can just repeat this over and over again and I can copy the cell block all right so you just got to be a little bit careful that you don't mess up because if you just do the insides then there'll be no walls so I'll place it and I place it here 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 I'm not going to do it but if I place it then there'll be no walls in between so you got to remember you have to have a wall at some point so I, I can do this but I have to remember which side the wall is on so I'm just going to copy the contents for this cell here, I'm going to place it there, and these are going to be two extra large cells, so that two, two prisoners will be living in luxury. Now as you also notice that there's no water, uh, there's electricity because I pu uh, put up the electricity before, but I haven't done the water yet, so it won't copy the utilities. So there we go, so, oops, hmm, that's not going to work. So I, this is what happens when you use the clone tool wrong, so I'm cloned this cell, but if I paste it here, it didn't work out, so I needed to copy this cell here and paste it. So this cell isn't going to work, but I could just make this a much extra big cell. So I'm going to fix that in three, two, one, bingo! There we go. Now that cell's nice and fixed. So yeah, we have a couple big cells, which is it's it's good to have. It's good to have a lot of small cells and a couple big cells. This plumbing, and then we can move on to micromanagement. There we go. Now we finished this cell block. It isn't exactly as good as a cell block, and if there was any shower, so they're probably going to have to go to this shower here. But this is still a nice cell block. Now we can have more prisoners in our prison. So we can go to intake. If we can say, hey, I want the same amount of min and max, and I want 9 minus 25 prisoners. So I'll be up to full. So I just keep going. 9 minus 25 is clearly 16. And there we go. So we'll get this much money for accepting 16 more prisoners, and then we'll get so much money per day for having these prisoners. So there we go. Now when this new batch of prisoners comes, we're going to want some more guards. So I'm going to place a guard 
or two here. And now you can see we're running a negative balance. So we're actually paying more money than we're earning. But when these new prisoners come, we not only get a big boost of money, but this number will increase. And we can look at finances. We can look at finance and we can see what we're earning and what we're spending. And right now we're only getting so much money for having these prisoners. We're only getting about 1,300, not one, getting one three five zero dollars per day and we're spending three eight one nine through all our expenses combined and so I mean this is good that we're having the days without incidents it's at 8.3 days so that's pretty good but this number is going to increase when we have more prisoners in our prison anyway now that we have this new cell block let us look at micromanagement now micromanagement allows us to look at food distribution and laundry distribution so food, food, food distribution, as we click here, these are where all the prisoners are living. So these are all the sources of the prisoners. So we have this prison cell block here. We have this one right here. We have this holding cell and the one it's connected to the shower common room. Oh, it, it's, um, it's because I have these solitary cells down here. These are solitary cells if I go out here. So there will be prisoners in here sometimes. And this is one big building. So go back to that right here. So all of the prisoners, there's only one canteen. So if they're going to eat, which all prisoners are going to eat, they're going to have to come to this canteen. We can kind of see the flow. All the prisoners from this cell block are going to flow into this canteen. Likewise, this is going to flow into this canteen. This holding cell, these prisoners are going to flow into this canteen. So when it's time to eat, everyone's going to come into this canteen at once. And you can see here, we can see the demand and supply. Well, right now it's the middle of the night. It's 1230. So no one's going to be eating anytime soon. But when it is time to eat, the demand is going to jump up to the number based on how many prisoners are going to be heading to this canteen. So basically all of the prisoners are going to be 25 once these prisoners come come and arrive. So all 25 of these prisoners will be coming into this canteen. We can see here we have two benches for each table. We have four tables and each bench can hold four prisoners. So each table can hold eight prisoners. This is 28. So these tables can hold all our prisoners for now. We can also have a couple extra chairs just if we need the room. And I'm not sure if the sofa counts, but maybe one prisoner would be able to sit in here. But that's probably, we're going to want to expand. this. What if we want this to be a cell block and we get another 14 prisoners? This We're not going to have enough room here. We're going to need two canteens. So if we have two canteens, which canteen will the prisoners go to? That's what this determines. This determines who goes to which canteen. And so this is why it's a dotted line. It's because this is the automatically generated by the game. This is what the game thinks is the best option. However, the game can get it wrong from time to time. And if you want to force it, you can you can click on the cell block. You can click the canteen you want to, and it'll make it a solid line. And you're saying, this is the one I want it to be. I want this cell block. I want the prisoners in this cell block to go to this canteen. Now, there's only one canteen. And there's a bunch of different cell blocks, but I can force all of them to go into this canteen. And so right now, if I build another canteen, no one will go to it uh, because all of the cell, all the places where there's prisoners are being forced to go into this canteen. I, this is the rule I made. This, the rule I made is prisoners in this cell block go to this canteen. And we can hover over it. We can see the predicted demand. At breakfast time, we have expected nine prisoners. And at dinner time, we expect nine prisoners. Well, we have nine prisoners in our prison, so this prediction is going to be very accurate until, well, nine o'clock when we have a bunch of new prisoners come up into a prison, and then it's going to be 25. But that, by then, that this number will adjust it. But this is why I built some more cookers and some more of these refrigerators, is so that I'm expecting more prisoners to come, and so I might even hire an extra cook. I'm going to just go to staff and then hire a cook. So now I have three cooks. There we go. Now they can cook a lot more. In fact, I'm just going to hire one more. Generally, I like to have one cooker, one cook for these cookers. And then it's generally two fridges per each of them. But I think this is going to be good in fridges. Maybe I'll put another extra fridge there. But this is generally the right idea. I have one sink, so it's not, I might put a sink here. I don't know exactly the, the proper, most efficient kitchen. All I know is that you can look at micromanagement and you can look at food distribution and you can see the demand and supply. And if the demand is higher than supply, you need to either expand the kitchen 
nearby, or you need to build another kitchen so that you can meet the demand. If you're not meeting the demand, that means you're going to have hungry prisoners. So this is a tool that lets you look at how to feed your prisoners. There we go. Now it's getting close. It's four hours before eight o'clock. And at four hours before, we get to see the demand. And this is when the cooks will start cooking. So uh, we hired, I think, two cooks. So now all the cookers are preparing. They're taking the food out of the freezer and they're putting it in the pots. They're cooking it up. And then once it's prepared, they're going to take the pot and they're going to bring it out onto the serving tables and the prisoners are going to eat it. I should have probably explained this. I probably already explained this already in like the first episode. But in case you didn't understand how the kitchen works, this is how the kitchen works. We can see in food distribution, we can see how much they've cooked up already. So right now they cooked up six meals. Well, we have nine people who are going to be eating here. So, well, now we have seven. Once it gets to nine, then we're good. And so this is how the game developers were able to figure out using the supply and demand. This is how they're able to make sure that the cooks wouldn't have to cook up too little food or too much food. They can predict the supply and, and adjust to it. Or they can predict the demand and then make a supply based to it. That was actually a really big problem. If it wasn't for this flow chart, it was really hard for the game developers to figure out who was going to go into which canteen. All right, and now we can see that it's turned green. So yellow means it's bean cooked. Green means it's, it's cooked. So right now we have six meals that are already ready to eat. Um, we had nine that were being prepared, but now we actually have six that are ready to eat. We can keep going. I'm going to just speed this up. Eight and then nine. There we go. And so you can see it's in balance. We have nine meals and we have not expecting nine people from all around the prison. There we go. Now our prisoners have entered. These new prisoners are going to come. We have two trucks and then all the prisoners are lining up. Half of them should be normal securities in the, in, um, the these orange uniforms. Half of them are going to be minimum security and it's going to be in these gray uniforms. And they're all coming into this room here. So we covered food distribution pretty thoroughly. Now we're going to move on to laundry distribution. The laundry distribution is pretty much exactly the same except it's, it kind of flows the other direction where this is where the uniforms are heading. So the uniforms have to be cleaned regularly and so they get cleaned in the laundry room and then those clean uniforms get brought to where the prisoners are. So instead of the prisoners be flowing into the canteen to eat, this is the uniforms flooded uniforms flowing from the laundry room away to these cells where the prisoners are. And this includes the reception room. So we can say, hey, this laundry room, we want to do this one. And we can hold shift, draw another line, and then this holding cell, this reception. There we go. And then that covers all of the stuff. So again, we don't have the supply and demand, but you can kind of tell by go looking at the needs if you need to build more laundry rooms. Or you can just see, hey, is there any any cell block that isn't being covered, uh, this isn't covered because they shouldn't be staying in solitary for a long period of time. Now I already talked about room quality a little bit, but now that I finished, now that all the cells are built, we can see that because this is a much bigger cell, it has a window. All right, it needs a TV, a chair, and a desk, and then this is going to be a really nice prison. Let's just do that really quickly, just for show. So objects, TV, chair, desk. Uh, this is going to be a little cramped, but I'm sure the prisoner won't mind too much. I would, I would rather have a bunch of cool stuff in my, uh, in my cell and then not have a lot of extra room. Let's see. TV and then the desk. Yeah, the desk is a little awkward. Maybe I should... Hmm. I'll put it here for now, but just pretend it's up against the wall and it makes sense. I mean, you could, you could kind of go around the desk and then there's a work work or whatever. It doesn't look really good. This, this is where I, the, this is the part of the game where I feel like I'm a little manipulative, where I'm, I'm just cramming everything in here. I'm doing this to show you what it's like to have a really, really nice cell. And so we can look at it for micromanagement. But there we go. This cell is now going to be really nice. And we go to room quality. We can see this is a seven cell and it's a way above average versus this cell is above average as well. And this is cell three. This is three. This is average. So we have a seven, a four. This is another four cell. Four. These are these are above average. Three is around average, and everything else is below average. So these four cells are going to have our four nicest prisoners in it, and then these other cells are going to have the prisoners who wish they were as nice as the prisoners in these four cells. These four cells, and then this one just has someone who might be in one of the four cells once. This one's the runner-up, one who didn't quite make it. 
We talked about prison labor. Uh, it's not strictly under micromanagement, but just again, just a refresher, you can control how many people are working in a room by clicking on the left mouse to add more people and the right mouse to reduce the number of people. Another thing that micromanagement lets you do is when you go to programs, it allows this edit schedule button to appear. So we click edit schedule and we can see everything that's been scheduled. So right now, this is our parole hearing we added. This is our workshop safety, kitchen safety, pharmaceutical treatment for drugs. And so as you can see, these all start at 1 p.m. So no one prisoner can do both and do anything, but we can actually reason if a prisoner wants to do both the workshop safety and the pharmaceutical treatment of drugs, they can't. They both are start at 1 p.m. But we can move this. So we can left click it and we can slide it down and we move it there. And by we put a little blue dot. So when you place something, when the user manually, the, again, these are auto generated. So I just said to start a program and it picked what it thought was the best slot. And it put it in this green bar here. And that's this green bar actually is my work. So if I go to my regime, regime da, 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 da. you can see from one to four that's my work and so that's when programs can be offered so not work doesn't necessarily mean you're putting the prisoners to work sometimes work means come and join these classes now I made a horrible mistake I um I forgot to turn off the prison intake and so now I have way too many prisoners ooh this is not good now I'm gonna leave it like this I'm gonna turn off intake so I don't have even more uh, intake off just get none but yeah we're gonna see some problems start arising in our prison so yeah people are gonna need want a lot of sleep we could probably make this a big holding cell and put in a tons of beds just so prisoners can sleep but that's tacky and lame and would only be used in emergencies I might do that but I want to finish up this tutorial so back to edit schedule so this Blue dot means we've pinned the program here, which means it's fixed. I want it at this time. I want this class to begin at 3 p.m. And if I hit the reschedule all programs, the the schedule might shift around. And the, the, if I change the work hours, for example, and I want it to start work to start an hour later, well, these programs won't start in work time, and so well, the classes won't be offered anymore. And then and then the game will be well, game will yell at you like, uh, these classes aren't going to work at these times. And you're going to get really frustrated. You just have to hit reschedule all programs to so that everything fits in the right schedule. Unless it's pinned, it won't move when it pins. Now, if you don't want to pin it, you just click the blue dot and it won't be pinned anymore. But generally, when you move a class, it's going to be pinned because the user, the player, says, this is where I want it to be. And the game respects your decision. But then you can also choose to opt out to say, hey, I am placed it here, but... And now that I place it here, you can you can choose what you want to do with it if I ever want to adjust later. So we can go to the common room. Nothing's happening at 3 o'clock, but we can create an alcoholics meeting. And we can choose to unpin it if we want. But now, well, that's one of the classes. And I didn't talk about it before, but this class that I just created in the scheduler, uh, the, you need a psychologist. It's two hours. Everyone has to sit in a chair. That is a requirement. So how many chairs you have is how many people can go to this class. So if you have no chairs in your common room, well, you can't have any of these group therapy sessions. And it's $200 per session, but now that I have 40 prisoners all living together, uh, yeah, I'm gonna want to have classes to help out the alcoholics. I, I mean, I expect that even if only like a third of the prisoners are alcoholics, that's still gonna fill up the entire class. And lastly, we can go to deployment, and this deployment scheduler has now been added because of micromanagement. Now, what does this mean? So right now I only have one guard deployed and he's always going to be, he or she is always going to be at this entryway kind to acting as sort of the door opener and also just the extra security. So make sure that once things are in the prison, they're not going to come out, but it also allows workers to come in and out efficiently. Now during work time, there's going to be a lot of prisoners in the workshop, in the laundry room, in the clean cupboards, and they might want to steal stuff and you know, they might want to do all these awful things. Also, during lunchtime and dinner time and breakfast time, all the prisoners are going to be in the canteen. So there's going to be easily be a lot of squabbling happening at those times because there's all the prisoners are being crammed into this one space. Now, I could deploy guards to all these places, but in the default, 
they're just going to be there all the time. I don't want them here in the canteen all the time. I don't want them in the clean cupboard all the time. I only want them in the clean cupboard during work. It's likewise in the workshop, in the laundry room, because the prisoners are not going to be here when it's not work time, and they're not going to be in the canteen when it's not eating time. So I don't want to do this. You know, what we can do is we can use this deployment schedule. And now what you can do is you can click this bar, and I'll show you the time of day. So I have work from 1 to 4. So this is work time. So work is red. So I can click this once for um, 1, 2, 1, 2. And I can right click to bring it back down again. So I can cycle through them up, up to 8, and then I'll loop again. And then back down, and I can back down through 8 using right and left click. So right now, 1 to 4 is going to have block 2. So this is going to be the deployment schedule for whenever the for whenever the time of day is this block. So when it's from 1 to 4, I want there to be a guard in the laundry room, the workroom, and the cleaning cupboard. Now if I look at the time now, there's nobody here. Nobody's going to be deployed in the workshop, in the laundry room, or the cleaning cupboard. But at 1, there will be a guard in each of these places. Now I can look at my schedule, and I can just keep my schedule here. I have eating from a 9, 8, 9, 6, and 7. So 6 and 7, 8 and 9. Oops. There we go. So now I want a guard. I actually want two guards in the canteen. And here we go. So now I can just X out of this. And then I'm just going to click this here. So this is the current deployment. So right now we only have our one guard being deployed here. And we haven't changed that. Both in two or one, we haven't changed that. But when it comes to work time, I didn't redo this every day. I didn't I don't have to do this every day. Now automatically, oops. Automatically, when it's work time or 1 through 4 specifically, guards will come to the workshop, the laundry room, and the cleaning cupboard. Now we can speed up time a little bit just to speed through work time. And so now we can go through a day and now the prisoners are going to come here, they're going to work. Uh we could sell this wood. Um this is actually a lot of money. I'm just going to do a quick trick. You can go to objects, sell objects. Can sell all this wood we just got eight thousand dollars so yeah that's a good idea now there's more room to put the new goods and we can sell those as well um, there is a trick I'll cover in a later episode how to do this automatically without uh, having to manually sell them but you can also just click on it and sell it for the money it's worth all right so it's still work time okay so it's three and so four o'clock let's look what happens to the guards once four o'clock hit well 401 in particular after work time Watch what happens to the guards at 401. They're going to move away because they're not going to be deployed there anymore. And there we go. And if we go to deployment, oh, sorry, for the, at 501, not 401. Okay, whoops, that's my bad. So at 501, they are going to be moving. 501, and all the guards move. And now it's free time, so the guards just kind of go around randomly. This prisoner just went up to the fence, which means he was stealing stuff that was thrown over the fence. So we're going to search him. And the guard's going to come up. He's going to search him. And he's going to be thrown into... At 6 o'clock, so now it's eating time. So there's going to be two guards in here. Yeah, here we go. He was caught. He was caught with luxury. So someone threw his cell phone over the fence. Now there's going to be two guards deployed here. We go to deployment. Bam. It's eating time. Two guards deployed here. No guards deployed. And then these other areas. And there we go. And we can do that. We can create a block for everything. And it doesn't have to be strictly to anything. I could, I could have, if I would want at one in the morning, I want two guards in the canteen. For whatever reason, I can do that with this one here. Also, if I want to, with deployment, I can make it, I can segregate our cell. So right now, minimum security can only be located in this cell and medium security can be only located in these cells. So I can, I can segregate my prison based on security level. So now when it's time to sleep, only minimum security here and medium security here, which is all the prisoners I have. I go up here, we only have these two types of prisoners in roughly equal numbers. But since I have so many extra prisoners, they're all going to be crammed in here and unhappy anyway. Yeah, and I, I've expanded the yard a little bit too to add more facilities to accommodate more people, but I don't think it's going to be quite enough. Yeah, hmm, this is a problem. We're going to have to fix this in the next episode. But anyway, I think that's all the time we have for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.